This is Banjo, and today I'm going over how to set up surface to air missile sites in the editor and DCS world. For this example, I'll make use of the SA 11 Buke, a Russian surface to air missile site that is fairly common in DCS world. An SA 11 site will consist of the command and control to relay the information from the radar to the launchers, the search radar to acquire enemy aircraft, and the launchers to launch the missiles. All available SAM sites are listed under the Air Defense category and are prefixed with the word SAM for surface to air missile. The SA 11 Buke in particular can be found under Russia and most PAC countries. As we're able to see in the list, most of the air defenses will consist of a command and control, search and tracking radar, and launchers. There are variations on these. The SA 10 has multiple radars available, different generations of radar. The SA-3 has a dedicated search radar, tracking radar, and the launchers, where the SA-6 has a combined search and tracking radar and the launchers. Due to the nature of how the command and control has to relay the information between the radar and the launchers, most launchers can't operate in standalone mode. This means with the destruction of the command and control unit, the search radar and or tracking radar, the group will be rendered inoperable. Next we're able to see a separate group, this is an SA-6 group, and as we're able to see it uses a combined search and tracking radar and launchers. So this group being somewhat simpler. And finally we have the SA-8 Gecko. These are capable of operating in standalone, as would be an SA-15 Tor. The final group we'll look at is the Patriot site, being one of the more complex groups you can create. These will consist of the electric power plant to power the engagement control station and the radar, information coordination central, to coordinate information between the radar and the launchers, search and tracking radar, the antenna mast group, and the engagement control station. These will all work together to feed the information to the launchers, and each launcher working in a line battery, as we're able to see here, we have four launchers per battery and three batteries in total. This being a fairly standard sized Patriot site. Rule of engagement can be set up for air defenses by adding a advanced waypoint action for rule of engagement and setting it up as desired, in this case weapons free. And we can even bind this to a condition so that it happens after a set time, for example, 10 minutes after mission start. One other advanced waypoint option we have available is alarm state. In this case I have it set for red. This will allow the group to go active at mission start or they will remain dormant until they detect an enemy threat before they go active. In game, we're able to see, even though I've set the alarm state to red, there's still a bit of setup time required for a site to go active. So keep this in mind if you're setting up a training mission, for example, and you don't see them going active, as it does take a couple of minutes. At this point, the radar is active and it's picking up enemy aircraft, relaying the information to the command and control, which is relaying it into the launchers, allowing the launchers to target the enemy aircraft and take it out. And finally, we can see again as the Patriot site goes active against a flight of four A-10s headed towards it. It's best to be sparing in the use of Patriot sites as they have probably the longest range of any surface-to-air missile in DCS. 